Warning, Tsukihime is an adult visual novel with themes and depictions of sex, sexual violence, rape, gore, and abuse. Warnings will be placed before any of these pop up in the video, just be advised that these themes are in the story. Welcome back to Tsukihime. Last time, as Shiki's dreams escalated, he passed out in a hidden area in the woods near the mansion. After talking with Hisui when he woke up, he quickly fell back to sleep and had a dream of his past. In this part, we start Chapter 9, Burning Body 1. A door closes softly, and my consciousness separates from my memories. My heart surfaces. Reality is on the surface. And I wake from the old dream. Huh? Why? Touching my cheeks, I realize I was crying. I don't know what was so painful, or what was so sad. Only the feeling that I had just lost something extremely important remains in my heart. Was it a nightmare? I think this is different from than those dreams where I killed people. But it was the first time that I slept so well in many days. Maybe it was because Hisui was watching me the whole time. Hisui? I lift my body and look around the room. I don't see Hisui anywhere. The sound I heard of a door closing was probably her leaving the room just a second ago. Anyway, it is now morning. Today is Friday, so I should go to school. I have to get up. Maybe it's the after effects of yesterday, but I feel a little nauseous when I stand up. I should change. What's this? My clothes aren't ready. It seems like Hisui went to pick up my uniform, which means she should return soon. Huh? Huh? All of a sudden, all the strength drains from my body and I collapse. It feels just like the normal dizziness, only I can't get back up. I can't even put any power into my arms or legs. I can barely move my arms, but I can't even get up from the ground. This can't be happening. I desperately try to get up, but I can't move. I can't even do a single push-up from here. Jeez, looks at like my condition's still pretty bad. Floundering around the carpet, I take in my situation. It's obvious that I won't be able to get up no matter how hard I try. It's not that I'm in much pain, so I should feel better if I lay over here for a while. Shikisama, I have your clothes ready. Isui opens the door and walks into my room. Shikisama? Isui's voice rings out like a scream and her footsteps rush towards me. Shikisama, please hold on! Shikisama! Isui frantically calls my name. Hey, morning, Isui. I just fell down a little, so there's no need to panic. Just fell down? What are you saying, Ishiki-sama? You- I'm fine. If you let me up, I'll be fine. As you wish. Isui immediately stoops down and reaches her hand to my shoulder. Ah! Isui suddenly stops her hand. With a strained face, Isui desperately reaches out her hand with all her will, sweat appearing on her forehead. But that is all she can do. Biting her lip, Hisui tries frantically to touch my shoulder, but she just stands there, shaking uncontrollably. I see. No, don't push yourself, Hisui. Just go get his Kohaku-san, and I'll, it'll be fine. Hisui nods and run out, runs out of the room. What was that all about? Hisui's obsession about cleanliness looks pretty bad. Collapsed on the floor, I carelessly voice my thoughts. Gohaku-san arrives soon and lends me her shoulder. Actually, since I don't have any power, Gohaku-san does most of the work. Probably because I'm so weak, but Gohaku-san has the gall to say that I'm as light as a girl. That's strange. There's nothing wrong, but my body just won't move. I see. You do not seem sick, but I can't say anything unless we wait a while. But your face looks fine. I think you will recover soon. Still smiling, Gohaku-san takes my temperature. Because of her smile, I do feel a little more at ease, but... Isui has a clouded expression. Even right now, she seems to be hiding behind Kohaku-san and looks at me occasionally. Nisan! And, with a bit of panic, Akiha bursts into the room. Yo, you're pretty energetic this morning, Akiha. I raise my hand to greet her. Wha- After seeing my face, her expression transforms into surprise. What's with this exaggeration? I'm fine, so don't make such a scary face. If you do that, I'll be the one to start worrying. That may be true, but... Akiha stares at me with a pale face. 
I really am fine, but it seems like Hisui and Akiha honestly think that I am deathly ill or something. Do I look that bad right now? No, Shiki-san. You look like you always do. That doesn't help. But still, your body is not fully recovered, so I think you should take the day off. I'll go call your school to let them know. Yes, please call the doctor as well. He can perform a more thorough examination. A thorough examination? I don't think I really need that. Nissan, if you don't care for an examination, maybe we should check you into a hospital instead. Uh, no, an examination will be fine. Alright, Kohaku, Hisui, please take care of Nissan. Since he does not seem to concern himself with his health, please do that for him. Akiha gives severe instructions and departs the room. In that case, I'll use the telephone, okay? Kohaku-san leaves the room as well. The only one left are me lying on the bed and Hisui. Hisui? Yes, what is it, Shiki-sama? I'm fine, so you can go back to your duties. Since I can't really move, it's not like I'll be going anywhere. Hisui does not even budge a single step. Hisui? What's wrong? You've been acting a little strange. If you feel sick, go ahead and rest. I don't mind. Hisui stands there in silence. And then... All of a sudden, as if making up her mind, Hisui says, Shiki-sama, are... you are not mad. What? Mad about what? Of what happened before. Even though I should take care of you, I could not even help you. Hisui, I'm shocked. I didn't even think about that. Well, it was a bit of a surprise. I thought you would be able to help me right away, but it ended up being kohaku -san. But I don't care about that. You may not realize it, Hisui, but you have already helped me so much. Compared to that, what happened earlier is nothing. Really? I do not think I'm very useful. You don't understand, it seems. I'm able to be calm right now because of you being here. It's more simple than you looking after me. If you weren't here, I don't know what I would do. Huh? Because of me? Of course. Ever since I came here, I've been uneasy and always had these nightmares. But when you say good morning to me every day, I'm able to be at peace. Therefore, you have helped me so many times. Like today, when you came, it made me happy. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, that's how it is. Even if you can't touch me, your words reach me, don't they? Just that makes me happy enough. Hisui, you are extremely helpful. Um, are you serious? I'm very serious. As proof, I don't feel like it's morning yet. It's because even though I said it, you haven't said it yet. Hisui looks at me timidly and takes a small breath. Yes, good morning, Shiki-sama. She blushes a bit as she says the words she forgot to say this morning. That's the thing. Everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses, so don't worry about it. Hisui, as long as you do what you do, everything will be alright. Hisui does not respond. She just looks at me as if she's deep in thought. Uh, if you stare at me like that, I'll start to get nervous, Asui. Uh, yeah, yes, F forgive me. After saying that, Asui starts to escape towards the door. Please, excuse me. It appears that Nissan has contacted the doctor, so he should be here soon. Bowing quickly, Asui shifts her head out of the door. Or swiftly heads towards the door. I'm an idiot. After a rather thorough examination that lasts four hours, the doctor leaves, and Kohaku brings Shiki back to his room. The doctor didn't find anything wrong with him, though they believed that his accident and subsequent recovery was the issue. Shiki decides to just rest in bed, but doesn't have anything to pass the time. The doctor said he shouldn't take any medicine just to be safe, so he can't take anything to go to sleep either. Kohaku then enters the room with some food, rice porridge to be specific. She notes that Shiki hasn't had anything to eat since he got up, and he thanks her for it. Oh, thanks, Kohaku-san. Not at all. This is my job, after all. Kohaku-san walks right next to my pillow, humming merrily as she holds the spoon. Um, Kohaku-san? Yes, please open your mouth wide. With a big smile, she asked me to do something extremely embarrassing. Eh? Not quite understanding the situation, I just opened my mouth. And then, after cooling down the rice in the spoon, she sticks the spoon in my mouth. With her open hand, she holds my jaw and moves it up and down. Kahaku-san, is this some kind of joke? Not at all. 
Shiki-san, you're sick, so it's only natural that I help you eat. Smiling, Gohaku-san proceeds to attack me a second time. This time, I am able to swallow it by myself. Good job. Keep it up, Shiki-san. Wait a second, Gohaku-san. I may be sick, but it's just my anemia. I can handle feeding myself. Sure, sure, now please calm down. I'm used to things like this. Gohaku-san gives me a please giggle and starts to attack me a third time. She puts the spoon into my mouth forcefully and I can't help but just swallow it down. How does it taste? I heard that when you lived with the Arimas, you liked plum porridge. Yes, it's very tasty. That's good. Then please, eat as much as you like. Gohaku-san appears to be having a fun time. <laughs> it seems like whatever I will say, I say will have no effect. I give up and let Kohaku-san do what she wants. I'm so embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, but I suppose I'm a little happy as well. Kohaku-san's cooking is so delicious and I finish pretty quickly. By the way, Shiki-san, how do you feel? I'm fine. It just feels like my regular anemia. Is that so? When you were a child, you received a serious injury there too. Or, serious injury here too. So please do not push yourself. Kohaku-san says this as she straightens up the dishes. Kohaku-san, what is that supposed to mean? Because if I'm reading that right... When you were a child, you received a serious injury here too. So please do not push yourself. So not just the car accident, something else happened on the property itself. Eh? That just means that you were in an accident and were really injured eight years ago, right? I heard that's why you were adopted by the Arimas, to help to get better. That's true, but that's not what I meant. You said that I got injured here at the mansion- In the first place. Just where did I get into an the accident that almost killed me? The near fatal wound from my childhood? The accident that caused me to be able to see the death lines? Just how in the world did it happen? And where in the world did I get that accident? I don't remember anything at all. Shiki-san? Is something wrong? Uh, uh, it's nothing. I don't think you'd even understand if I told you. But what I remembered yesterday, it may be something to do that has to do with the accident eight years ago. That time, I think, there was a Kiha, myself, and one other person there. I will go and take care of the dishes then. Kohaku-san tries to leave the room. Wait a sec, Kohaku-san. Back then, we played together a lot, didn't we? At the time, was there someone else with us? Kaku-san stops in her tracks. We played. A lot? Together? She laughs. As if remembering the past, her nostalgic laughs echo in the room coldly. Hmm. Maybe it is your imagination? Maybe Hisui-chan might have been with you or something. Ah, uh, maybe that's it. That could be it. Of course. Well then, I'll see you later. Kohaku-san carries the dishes and leaves the room. Well, having eaten, I feel pretty sleepy. There isn't anything else to do, so I guess I should just sleep a little. Oh, I thought I was getting cut off, but I guess I'll just sleep a little. Shiki is now in a dark place. He thinks it's a basement. There are desks and chairs scattered around, and broken chalkboards and folding chairs in the back. There is no light, but he finds himself sitting on top of a desk with another dead woman at his feet. The sound of my breathing. It's ragged. The thing is thinking that it does not have enough blood. The thing is thinking that it wants to eat fresh meat. I'm thinking that I want to kill people. Both this breathing and Shiki's tired breathing match in unison. Who is it? Raising my voice, I look around. In this basement, there is no one else. Their heavy breathing continues. Damn it, it's you again. It shouts this at me. I won't. I took this woman myself. I won't give her to you. It bites into the corpse and continues its morbid feast. As this being's breathing grows wilder, Shiki's breathing intensifies with it. I'll kill you. Soon I'll kill you. As if it's lose lost its mind, it starts to wolf down everything, even the bones. Shiki-sama, are you sleeping? Uh... Suddenly, Hisui appears in front of me. Hisui, when did you come in? When... when, you ask? It has been about five minutes since I finished changing your sheets. Oh. Sorry, I... I was sleeping and I didn't notice you come in. 
Shiki-sama, please do not joke around. You accepted me coming into the room and you ordered me to change the sheets. What? What's going on? Up until now, I was asleep, had another nightmare, and I woke up to Hisui's voice. Hisui... Did, did I look like I was awake? Yes. After I changed the sheets, you closed your eyes, which is why I inquired if you were sleeping. No, I won't sleep anymore right now. Somehow responding, I look at my hand. Lifting my hand is still difficult. I haven't gotten even the slightest bit better. My heavy body. My body. The body of Tono Shiki feels like it belongs to some other person. I'll be awake for a while. Do you have work after this? No, today I will be watching over you. If that is alright with you, I would like to take care of you, Shiki-sama. I can't help but be grateful. If Isui is here, I probably won't see nightmares like the one I saw before. That's exactly what I wish, Isui. If I am not a burden to you, please stay in this room. Or stay in my room. Yes, then I shall do so, Shiki-sama. After giving a bow, Hisui stands and watches me intently. Um, you don't have to concentrate so hard. I would be happier if you just maybe bring in a chair and read a book or something. I'm just going to kill some time, too. Ah, yes, as you wish. Hisui quickly leaves the room. I am sure she'll come back with a book and a chair, just like I suggested. You're pretty dutiful, aren't you, Hisui? I laugh a little as I say this. It feels like ages since the last time I met Hisui again, and thought that she was simply a cold, expressionless girl. Well, that's all I thought back then, but now... I think I understand Hisui a little better. Come on, Hisui, hurry back. Leaning on the bed, I really do mean this. If she's going to be around, being sick like I am right now doesn't sound bad at all. Hisui nursing me turns out to be, just her, be her just being with me. Not being able to touch someone of the opposite gender, Hisui can't really take care of me physically. Taking my temperature or wiping the sweat off my brow is Kohaku-san's role, and Hisui just stays by me, listening to me when I ask for anything. Like something to drink. But that doesn't mean I'm, I'm dissatisfied. It's not that she was always there, but she was there most of the time. Thanks to that, I didn't see any terrible dreams. It becomes a little before 10 o'clock, right before bedtime. Nissan, how are you feeling? Akiha comes to see how I'm doing. Yeah, I feel fine. Even though I still can't move my body freely, I think I'll be better tomorrow. This kind of thing happened to me once before, and it's exactly the same as back then. I'm glad to hear it. It makes me feel a little more at ease. Akiha exhales and visibly relaxes. Good night, Nissan. Ah, but even if you'd feel better, don't strain yourself. It wouldn't do any good to see you to get hurt again. I know that. Good night, Akiha. Thanks for all your concern. Uh, well, we are brother and sister, and it's only natural. Uh, anyway, please take care. I do not wish to see you collapsed again tomorrow. With a light smile, Akiha exits the room. It eventually becomes nighttime, and, still unable to move, Shiki drifts to sleep. Unlike the previous chapters, there is no dream to finish this one. Instead, we peacefully conclude Burning Body 1. With Shiki and Isui growing a bit closer, and with Shiki having been bedridden for the entire chapter, we will move on to Chapter 10, Burning Body 2. The light from the window wakes me up. I didn't have any dreams. It really was just a sleep without dreams, good or bad. Thanks to that, I don't feel bad at all. Today's Saturday, so I should probably thank Isui and Kohaku-san for taking care of me. It's only just past 6. All I did was lie down yesterday, so I don't feel tired anymore. Time to get up. I get up from bed. Eh? My body doesn't move at all. I haven't healed at all. If anything, it's worse. Yesterday I could move my arms, but today I can't even do that. <laughs> I try to bring my arms straight up. Ah, <sighs> ah. Uh, I finally managed to do so. Using all of my strength, it takes me about a full minute. What's going on? It's like my body is dead, or more like a robot out of gas. At any rate, my body won't move. At the same time, I am fully conscious, and I don't feel any pain. Hey, Hisui, Kohaku-san. I was going to tell them to come here, but I stop. I can speak, but using a loud voice makes me extremely dizzy. It almost feels like a loud voice uses too much muscle, placing too much strain on the blood flow to my brain. Ah... Uh, 
I breathe out. I guess all I can do is just wait for Hisui to come wake me up. An abridged version of the last chapter then happens, culminating in another doctor's visit before he goes back to his room. However, instead of laying down, Shiki's now laying upright with his back on the headboard. Meanwhile, Hisui is watching over him worriedly. Hey, what's with that expression? I told you that I'm not in any pain or anything, so you don't need to worry. I am very sorry, Shiki-sama. I told you it's alright. Jeez, you really are worrisome. Well, I guess you two really are sisters. You're a lot like Kohaku-san in that way. Eh? I'm... I'm like Nisan. Hasui asks, very surprised. Well, I wasn't referring to the appearance, as that's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's a pretty old story. Did you know that Kohaku-san has acted like an older sister since we were small? Whenever Akiha or I would get hurt, Kohaku-san would get so worried. No, it's fine if it was only when we got, were hurt, but even when we were not feeling well, she would be very fussy in telling us to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Uh, she really was that fussy. Yeah, I felt pretty bashful when she did- when she do it. Huh, when was it? I remember once when I caught a cold, I wanted to play anyway. kohaku she said, keep telling me to go to bed over and over. Eventually, she won, and I went back to my room. But after that, she came into my room and lay a wet towel on me. I really thought that she would smother me to death. <laughs> Come to think of it, this time around... I think Kohaku-san wasn't worried as much as I thought, but maybe she wanted to act as a nurse or something? She really did seem to enjoy it. Ah, but I didn't mean- but I don't mean I didn't like what Kohaku-san did. I liked what she would do, and playing with Akiha was also fun. That's right. Come to think of it, I had a pretty happy time as a kid. Yes. I am sure Nissan feels the same way. Isui nods quietly. Oh no. Simply talking about my childhood like this, Hisui must be getting bored. Sorry, I didn't mean to bore you with this kind of talk. Please, do not worry about it. I enjoyed it. Uh, really? In that case, certainly Hisui doesn't look bored at all. Yes, as long as it does not bother you, please continue on. The doctor said that any sort of activity is preferable. I see. They say to move the, my body, but it's really just my mouth I can move right now. Jeez. I don't really have much to talk about, although I have, do have a lot of memories of my childhood. I do not mind. Please tell me about your childhood, Shiki-sama. Really? But I think it'll just be boring. Are you sure? Yes, I am really enjoying this. Isui gives an extremely happy smile. Completely forgetting about the state I'm in now, my heart state starts to race. What are you in? Missouri? The smile that is so rarely seen on Hisui's face it makes me blush, and, well... Shikisama? Is there something wrong? Uh, no, it's nothing. Well, let's continue talking about the past, then. Isui nods. As I continue to remember more and more about the past, I continue my boring, inane monologue. At lunchtime, Kohaku-san comes in and trades places with Isui. Kohaku-san brings a wash pail and several towels. I get a really bad feeling about this. Shiki-san, we have to wash your body, so please endure this. I knew it. Um, even though it is something I'd hate to do, I can't exactly say no. It's obvious that since I can't move my body, someone has to clean it for me. I've been laying around since yesterday, and to be honest, I do feel sticky and pretty gross. Yes, please. Not at all. I'm the one who should be saying please. And it's over. It was deadly embarrassing, but I can't fight Kohaku-san. After all, Kohaku-san helps me get to the bathroom when I have to go. After receiving so much care from Kohaku-san, I think being embarrassed is rude to her. All finished. Thank you for your cooperation. After changing me into a new set of pajamas, she replaces my sheets. But Chiki-san, you really have no strength at all, do you? I was surprised you didn't even flinch when I was washing you. You're right. I wonder what's wrong with my body. Normally, when someone is taking care of you, if they move your arms and legs, there's some sort of muscular reaction in the body. Since the reaction is there, the one doing the carrying has usually takes a lot of work, but I don't even have that reaction right now. It's like I'm a boneless jellyfish. Jellyfish might be quite right. I meant it to be a joke, but I don't feel like laughing. How do I put it? It's almost as if 
I'm not quite alive. The fact that I can't move my body? I didn't think that not having any feeling in my body would be this scary. It's like I'm almost in a dream, just a vague existence. Shiki-san, please don't make that uneasy face. Whatever the reason, I'm sure you will be able to return to normal soon. I'm sure, but I wonder what the reason is. If there is a reason, it would be this scar from eight years ago. The doctor said it was simply a miracle to be alive. Perhaps this is the price for my miraculous recovery. If that is the case, then I, Tono Shiki, may never be able to even stand on my own for the rest of my life. Shiki-san, are you okay? You look terrible. Ah, uh, I just imagined something terrible and got a little scared. Oh, that's no good, Shiki-san. If your spirit is weak, you will never be able to recover. I guess you're right. I guess I'll try think to think positive. Thank you very much, Kawaku-san. As long as you understand, you understand things pretty well and you always seem to accept your circumstances. So I think it's okay if you complain every once in a while. Kawaku-san seriously offers some advice. Suddenly, I remember what I was telling Hisui earlier. Jeez. Kawaku-san, you still do like nurse to nurse people, don't you? Huh? What do you mean by that? Remember way back when I caught a cold and wanted to play anyway? It's just like back then. Hmm, I guess something like that happened. You never said anything about how you felt, Shiki-san. But you found out quickly. Afterwards, you made me go back to the detached building and I never forgave you for that. Not really. I was actually extremely grateful, but I thought I'd tease Kohaku-san a little bit. And then? Kohaku-san tries earnestly to remember and she freezes in place. Huh. What? What's this? Did you forget? I guess so. I'm sorry, my memory is not all that great. No, it's hard to remember stuff from eight years ago, so it's no big deal. You're right. I remember most of the things, but it's something from eight years ago, so maybe I might be forgetting something important too. I completely agree. Before I went to the garden in the forest, I had forgotten entirely the image of the accident eight years ago. Well then, I'll bring you some food, so please rest until then. We skip to the afternoon. Shiki is all by himself in his room, as he let the maids return to their duties since he felt bad for keeping them for so long. Since he didn't have any dreams last night, he thinks he can be alone for a bit. He still worries about his health, as even though he feels fine, he also can't move. Still stuck in his bed, he thinks about how ten days have passed since his return to the mansion, and how he's grown so comfortable here in that time. But this thought is cut short. And? My headache. Uh oh. Eh? Lines. I can see lines. My glasses are on, so why? <sighs> Who is it? I move my head. There's no one in the room except me. <sighs> I can hear someone breathing. Something that sounds like a wild dog salivated breathing reaches my ears. <sighs> what? I managed to turn my head, but there's no one behind me. I can't even sense anyone. Is it some sort of auditory hallucination? No, it is a hallucination, but it's real. <sighs> it isn't echoing through my room. It's echoing inside my head. In that case, this breathing is without a doubt coming from inside my brain. Shiki and this unknown voice start panting and sink. What is this? Just what is this? I'm about to merge with him. I'm about to fuse with him. Triangle cogwheels and diamond cogwheels, noise echo, panorama of strings. There shouldn't be any point of connection between us. Even in an illusion, knowing should be rejected. Strange, strange. What are you? What are you? I am. I am! Ah. Uh, the torrent breaks through. Spinning. 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 The world is spinning. Words and phrases flood into Shiki's thoughts as he desperately pleads for this wave of information to stop. The voice laughs while Shiki struggles to fight the tide. Spiraling clouds, I am unparalleled. Upwards falling sand, eight years ago. Killed, 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 you. Killed. <laughs> shut up, shut up. Uh, uh, it stops. Trying with all my might, I bang my head against the wall and it stops. What the hell was that just now? I don't know. Just random words filled my mind and I couldn't think about anything. Anything at all, not being able to think and all those words repeating machine like in my head. 
Ah, uh, I noticed that tears are streaming from my eyes. Mucus and drool are streaming down my face as well. Ah! Uh, my head hurts. It's not a normal headache I get from my anemia. My brain feels like it's about to explode. It's because even though I have a limit to my memory, much more than I can handle has flowed into my mind. Once more, once more, if that inexplicable headache returns, at this rate my mind will surely break before my body does. <laughs> what? Stop. It's flowing. No, I'm picking it up. That guy's knowledge of a level so far beyond that of ours is picked up by me. Yes, we are about to merge. The fusion between me and him has already begun. It was eight years ago. The white summer day. The recollection of that day matches the pace of the prior information overload that Shiki had just experienced. The voice then speaks up. Pointless. All of it. Stop! As long as you keep your eyes open, I will become one with you. I just desperately close my eyes as if imploring for help. Uh, uh, it subsided. The flow of information in the voice inside my head ceases. Thank goodness. I breathe a sigh of relief, but on the other hand, I feel a chill go down my spine. If I open my eyes, that will happen again? I don't know. Maybe that was instantaneous, but I'm too terrified to open my eyes. A disgusting sensation. It feels like a caterpillar is crawling within my brain. I become sleepy. But if I sleep, I might see those nightmares again. I don't care. That dream is much better than what happened now. I relax my consciousness. With my eyes still closed, I fall asleep. Shiki is back in the dark room from the last dream. He thinks it might be his school's gym basement. Pieces of people partially eaten lie on the floor. The resident of this room has brought another victim into his domain. He eats at the body like an animal, and the pleasurable sensations are transmitted to Shiki. The resident then speaks to him. You again, Shiki! It screams. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it! It acts as a child throwing a tantrum. Breaking all the desks and pulling off pieces of concrete from the floor. I'll kill you, I'll kill you, I'll kill you! Saying so, it thrusts a knife in its own hand. Shiki feels the pain. The resident wounds his leg, and that too is felt. Saying, I'll take back what you stole. He claws into his stomach. This pain is intense enough to fill Shiki's mind with only one thought on loop. Pain. Targeting other parts of his body, the resident inflicts more pain onto Shiki as if he were a voodoo doll. Shiki can't take the pain. He recognizes this as a dream, but no matter the pain, he is unable to wake up or die. Your voice, your position, all of it is mine. It was originally mine. Just you wait. I will kill you. I will come soon. Screaming, it takes a knife, brings it to its head, aims for the brain, and stabs deeply. Ah! In the middle of the ultimate pain, I wake up. Ah! 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 A dream. That was a dream. But my body is still hurting everywhere. Hand, thigh, eye, skull. They all hurt. The pain I received during my dream, I brought it back into reality. Ah! But my body still can't move. Even though I feel like there is a hole ripped in my palm, I still can't move my body. Ah! Ah! At least if I could move, I could thrash around and maybe reduce some of the agony, but I can't even do that. Damn it. What is this? Why do these things? Earlier, I thought my mind would break before my body would. Why do these things happen to me? But if I sleep, my body may very well break before my mind. That guy, what is he? That someone who comes in my dreams. That someone who knows me, whose nerves become one with me. The one who kills people every night. What is this? You won't admit it yet. Admit what? I am you. No way. You are the same as me. No, I'm still sane. For the longest time, you have already been crazy. I told you no. Shiki-sama. And, without a knock, Hisui enters my room. Hi Sui? 
Shiki-sama, was that your voice just now? Isui walks to the bed with an urgent expression. What? Shiki-sama, what? What in the world? Isui's voice is shaking. I look down. My sheets are soaked in blood. It looks like the blood came from my hand and my thigh. I say, looks like, because I just think so. Because there's no wounds on my body, so what's wrong is the fact that the blood's there. Chisui-chan, I will prepare an IV, so please watch over Shiki-san. Wait, Nisan, Shiki-sama is... Chisui-chan, don't you think it's best to listen to what your older sister has to say once in a while? Ah. Uh. Now, Shiki-san, you are going to have a blood transfusion soon, so please relax until then. After taking care of me, Kohaku-san leaves the room. Shiki-sama, is there really nothing wrong? Nisan told me not to worry, but all that blood... Pretty persistent, aren't you? I said there isn't anything wrong. I don't have any wounds. I'm the one with questions. Saying this roughly, I hate myself. I'm sorry for Hisui, but I can't calm down. There... there must be something wrong with me. If I sleep, I dream of the killer and hurt myself. I know that's the cause of the bleeding. I know, but I can't tell Hisui or Kohaku-san that. They wouldn't believe me, and worse, they would think I would simply have gone crazy. I'll admit my body is weird, but Hisui, Kohaku-san, and Akiha, I just don't want them to think I am crazy. I don't... I do not want to say that. But Shiki-sama, her body is not working properly. You appear to have a fever, and your breathing is wild. I do not wish to see you like this. Isui swallows the rest of her sentence. I'm fine. Go away. Thanks for worrying about me, but I just want to be alone for now. Then, is there something you want? If you are thirsty, please tell me, I can, and I can bring you something. Something... I want? Uh-oh, I don't like the music cut off. Something I want. I don't really want anything right now. Yeah, I am certainly thirsty. Shiki's mind fixates on his thirst. It warps quickly into a thirst for blood. The only noise from his mouth is an ah as Hisui says his name in a confused way. Shiki's thoughts continue to spiral. He lusts for Hisui, and an image of the girl from Chapter 7 flashes on screen. After this thought, he manages to punch himself in the head. I hit myself in the head. The arm that I couldn't move before was able to be moved out of pure hatred for myself. Shiki-sama! What is wrong, Shiki-sama? Don't come near me. Shiki-sama... I breathe painfully. My throat is burning. My body is burning. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. What was I just thinking? Don't come near me. If you do, I don't- I don't know what I will do. But, Shiki-sama, I told you not to come near me. I'm not crazy. I scream, refusing Hisui's help. As he internally confirms the harm that will come if she doesn't, Shiki tells Hisui to leave his room. Just leave. Hisui, you don't understand anything about my body. Yes, as you wish, Shiki-sama. Hisui leaves. As she leaves, I stare at her with hazy vision. Some time has passed, but Shiki is still on edge. His thoughts are still corrupted, thinking of doing horrible things to those who have checked on him during that time. He's told Akiha, Hisui, and Kohaku to leave his room. He believes that only in isolation can he maintain his sanity, but, by himself, he knows he will break eventually. As a headache pounds in his head, he tries to sleep to avoid it. However, the dream of pain fills his mind, and he wakes up. The headache returns, and he is coaxed to sleep, only to be awakened in pain again. This repeats again and again, and his body shakes in pain while he struggles to breathe. His sense of time is gone, and he's unsure if he'll be alive or himself by the morning. The door opens with a creak. The sound of approaching footsteps. I am half asleep, and can't tell exactly who it is. Nissan, you look ex so exhausted. She looks like she is crying. I'm so sorry. You're in this much pain, but there is nothing I can do. The weight of fingers. This is the only thing that I can do, Nissan. Akiha wraps her fingers in mine. Throb, throb, throb. Matching the sound of my IV, 
Akiha's body temperature flows into me. Warm. Feels like my rotten wall of my consciousness got rebuilt by, by just that. Hold on, Nissan. I will save you soon. Her fingers separate. The sole of footstep or the sound of footsteps goes away. The door closes. In my half sleep, I saw that strange dream. As Shiki's consciousness fades away, the end of the chapter fades in. With Shiki's condition worsening and a malicious attack on him still ongoing, this part comes to a close. I will see you next time for chapter 11. Burning Body 3